Today's episode won't be a boring political dive, nor will it be just for Victorian viewers, not even Australian viewers. No, this episode is for the whole world to watch, listen and learn about how a tax that penalises electric vehicle drivers is made into law. How? Through multiple lies, misinformation and poor understanding of how EVs help our world. For the next 15 minutes, I'm going to share with you how our po politicians were lied to, lied to us, and how you can stop the same thing from occurring in your hometown. This week, Victoria Australia passed the world's worst EV tax. It will mean owners of electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles will pay per kilometre 2.5 cents or 2 cents respectively, meaning a tax bill of about $350 a year. Tim Pallas, Treasurer for Victoria, put forward this legislation stating that this new tax was a way to ensure that electric vehicles pay for their fair share of roads and infrastructure. His words, which I want you to remember because that's how he sold this tax to fellow politicians and the Australian public. His reasoning for this fair share of taxes, EVs don't fill up at the pump and so not paying fuel excise, a tax detailed in this video. This is his first lie. Fuel excise does not directly fund roads, period. Fuel excise is funneled into federal, not state, consolidated revenue. That is a big pot of cash where all taxes go. The next lie is Tim Pallas's assertion that only vehicles who fill up with petroleum products pay for roads. The truth, if you have ever paid GST, car registration, stamp duty, council rates, income tax, and any other tax we pay in Australia, you have paid for roads and associated infrastructure. If you don't own a car, you pay for roads. If you walk, you pay for roads. If you use public transport, you pay for roads. I guess comments like these are from people who don't understand that fuel excise is a tax just for people who fill up at the Bowser. And perhaps they are jealous that people who drive zero and low emission vehicles have removed themselves from having to pay this tax. And if you're about to comment below, Chris, we all pay taxes so that we all have a fair and just society then without delving into macroeconomics 101, we need to remind ourselves that taxes are designed for two fundamental reasons. First, to encourage governments to pay for things like roads, schools, and healthcare. Reminder, we all pay taxes, don't we? No, not you, no, okay. The second reason, to discourage behaviors that cost society. For example, smoking and alcohol. If you've given up cigarettes, great, you no longer pay tax on them. Decrease or cut alcohol consumption, awesome, less tax for you. No longer fill up at the bowser, great, no more tax for you. But our governments seem to lose sight of this and throw billions of dollars at the problem of fuel security, dying fossil fuel industries, all at the expense of not just those who fill up at the bowser, but all taxpayers. Yet. Politicians, people, overlook how our governments give fossil fuel companies a free kick in the form of subsidies to the tune of $29 billion per year. That is taxes they didn't have to pay. This mentality of the consumer pays is just wrong. Even more wrong for those who buy and use electric vehicles who have given up fuels and instead fill up with clean, green, renewable power, who are then slugged through the taxes, not just for road infrastructure, but also these things and this industry, which will abandon us soon enough, leaving a dirty great big mess for us all to clean up. Imagine how much better off this country would be if those bad things that we didn't want in our life, PM 2.5, particulate matter, all of which contribute about $18 billion in healthcare costs per year, were fairly taxed. And so bringing back to the spotlight, how this tax was premised by Tim Pallas, that because EVs don't pay fuel excise, they aren't paying for their fair share of road infrastructure. Remember all these numbers. By government's own admission, they hypothecate 
that $20 billion raised from all forms of fuel excise, that is aviation, shipping, agriculture, and vehicles, just $5 billion is spent by the federal government on road funding. Key word, not directly on roads. Just something immaterial that they select how they want to spend it. And all that $20 billion raised, $8 billion is given back to large transport vehicles, and they do the most damage to our roads. And here's the next big lie that you need to listen out for and correct when you hear it. The majority of our roads are not built by the federal government. The majority of our roads are not built by our state government. 90% of our roads are actually built and maintained by councils, local councils. So when you hear people argue that electric vehicle owners do not pay for their fair share of road infrastructure, kindly point out these facts to them, please. This last month, we've seen overseas how government can encourage the decarbonisation of our world. President Biden announced a trillion dollar tax on wealthy companies and individuals. He also introduced an equally large electrification program for America. A Dutch court ordered Shell to cut its emissions by half. Chevron investors demanded emissions to be cut. And shareholders of ExxonMobil have elected directors who will bring about climate action. Yet our government, both state and federal, don't tax fossil fuel companies who do willful damage to our environment and people's health. Our leaders give them subsidies. They tax all motorists and they penalise people who have given up this form of taxation by going electric. On Tuesday, I watched and listened to senators who supported this legislation, and worryingly, they kept saying this pre-prepared line, Zelevs must pay this tax because they don't pay some other form of road tax. Excuse me, but that's another blatant lie. This plug-in hybrid does. If you own one, not only will you be paying fuel excise, GST, but also this EV distance charge and GST on your electricity and your home, for which you use to charge your vehicle. Again, remembering all that I've said to this point, this lie that Zellers must pay tax because they don't pay some other form of tax is ridiculous. And for those who live in other states and territories of Australia, including in America and well, any other part of the world, this could be introduced in your place. And my fear is, is that not only will fuel excise continue in its current form and penalise murderers, but also this tax will stay, then maybe fuel excise will disappear, then it'll be a brand new tax and there'll be another tax on a tax. That's what we do in Australia. We just lay our stuff on to the tiny little guys. For a moment, I want to believe Tim Pallas's lies and actually use them against him. Because saying now that, well, electric vehicles, because they're paying this tax, will be paying for road and road infrastructure, I'm going to introduce a brand new hashtag, my EV pays for roads, your ICE car doesn't. Catchy, no? But again, Tim has been caught out lying. Uh, part 7, Division 3, Section 77, Appropriation of Consolidated Fund. This EV tax is also going to central revenue. Will it be used for roads? Probably, maybe, most likely not. It only affects about 7,000 Victorians and it's only going to be raising about $30 million in three years. I have doubts that it will. And so my hashtag is already wrong. Folks, this is just another tax. He and perhaps your government has lied to you on multiple accounts. Whilst no surprise to me and many viewers, we all need to learn these lessons. The message by Tim was a clever one. Make out a tiny minority, demonize them, say it isn't fair. But do you know what isn't fair? This. A person who fills up their EV at home with electricity from the grid will pay almost twice as much tax as a hybrid owner. For plug-in hybrid owners, the insult is even greater. They will be paying a tax on a tax on a yet another tax, and even more taxes. This EV tax discourages EV uptake. It makes the cost of ownership higher, and means that motorists will, who pollute are rewarded for sticking with their fuel-dependent, health-damaging cars. This tax is damaging. 
The Victorian government shouldn't have looked to the 7,000 EV owners for the tax issue. They should have instead taxed big players who pay little to nothing in taxes. I'm angry. I'm disappointed. I'm embarrassed. At a time when not even 1% of vehicles in Australia are electric, representing a tenfold laggard behind other nations, now is not the time to tax EVs. I could go on and on, but you get the idea. This legislation was passed by misinformed senators who swallowed some big lies from a treasurer who doesn't seem to get how different tax levers can encourage and promote things and discourage or stop others. So who voted for this legislation? Obviously Labor went on party lines, Liberal against, Greens against, but the ones who held the balance of power in the Senate, four of the 12 independents voted in favour of it. And they were the Reason Party, Animal Justice Party, Transport Matters Party, and Darren Hinch's Justice Party. For the moment, on YouTube, I'm done on this subject. I'll keep raising awareness through other social media channels and write to every politician every once in a while just to remind them of how stupid this tax is. But this is where I need to warn the world how Taxing the wrong thing at the wrong time can happen in your hometown. Look into your taxes. What do you pay? Where does the money go? And what is it used for? If in Australia they all end up in a big pool at various levels of government, then remind your local member of this. If the problem is revenue, whereby government is struggling to keep the lights on and the budget in the black, then Point them in the direction of other countries like Norway, who actually tax petroleum companies, who in turn pay for good things that we all want. Learn from countries like New Zealand, where they're overhauling their fuel tax system and likely moving to a distance tax system for all vehicle types. We all need to raise awareness of Victoria's situation with friends, family and co-workers. Talk to politicians, let them know that you too are a taxpayer and that you fund roads and that your electric vehicle is actually helping to decarbonize our world, cut emissions, improve the health and environment and the local community in which you live. Definitely on this subject, I'm done for a while. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, look, let me know your comments, put them down below. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe, give us a like, share on your socials. And if you wanna support the channel at the next level, think about joining us over here on Patreon where you get early access to news, polls, behind the scenes, and a lot more that you just don't get here. Or from only $2.50 per month. That's like 60 cents per week. And as per usual, you be good and you be great.